there, Sharon Peterson here with simplycanning.com and I am working with beets today. So I thought I would show you how you peel beets. Now, um, you need to do this step for a variety of preserving projects or if you're just gonna cook them for, for dinner. So um, if you're gonna canning beets, if you're dehydrating beets, if you're just cooking beets for dinner, this is how you peel them. I am actually gonna be freeze drying these and so um, that's, what I'm, that's what my project is today. But I thought I would show you how you get them peeled. So let me turn my camera around and I can show you my sink area and what I have going on. Okay, so when I'm working with beets, I like to work down in my sink. Um, beets can be kind of messy and so it makes it really easy cleanup. Plus it's lower and it just you're, it's just easier to work when the pot is down in the sink like that. So when you're gonna can or, or when you're going to peel beets, whether it's for canning or cooking or whatever project, um, you're gonna boil them. Now I prefer boiling, some people will roast them and that works too. You just need to make sure that the beet gets cooked because when it's cooked, those skins peel right off. You can just rub them off with your thumbs. I have tried roasting, but it seems to me when I boil them, uh, they just seem to peel easier, they're moister, and so that's just my preference. Um, you can do it either way. If you do roast them, make sure that you cover them so that you keep them nice and moist, uh, whether it's just with foil or with a, in a pan with a lid or something like that. So after that step, once they are cooked, then you're going to go ahead and put them in a pot um, you're going to drain off the hot water, and that's what I have right here. This is drained, and then I pour cold water on top of it, and that just tends to slow, um, it actually stops the cooking, it slows, the, or it cools the beets off so that they're cool enough that you can handle. They're still warm, but, you know, you can handle them. And then I have a, uh, let's see, a strainer, I guess you would call it, a strainer in this pan, or in this sink. Um, this is actually a section out of my juicer, which I will put a link to that down below there too, but um, I use it for all kinds of stuff. It's just a nice big strainer. This is where, as I'm peeling, I'll have the water running like that, and that just helps to rinse the bead off and all the scraps go in here, but then the water can run out and go away. And then in here is where I put the beads that are peeled. And these are ready to either be chopped, put in jars, put in the dehydrator. Um, if you're gonna dehydrate them, slice them thin. Um, put them in a pan for supper. Today I will be freeze drying them. So let me go ahead and turn this around and I'll peel a couple beets for you and show you how it works. I can't do this one-handed and so um, let me turn around. Okay, so these are the beets that are ready to be peeled. Um, they're still warm but, but you know they're not hot enough that I can't handle them. And what they should look like when you take them out of the boiling water is when you rub them with something that skin should just peel right off like that. I don't know if you can see that but it just peels off right with your fingers. So again, I'm working over my strainer here in the sink. I like to have just a little bit of water running over the beet like this. Let me turn my camera here. And then I have a knife and I just cut the bottom off like so. Use my thumbs to wipe all that off. Cut the tops off and then um, that should all just peel right off. Now if you have a little bit of a stubborn spot, you just use your knife and cut through that. Um, this beet was probably sticking out of the top of the water or something because that top didn't quite get cooked enough to just peel right off. But there you go, that's your, that's your peeled beet. This is ready to be cut up for whatever project, whether you're canning or dehydrating, again, freeze drying, or if you're just gonna cut it up and heat back up again and eat it for supper. Let me try another one here and see if I can get it to, here's a smaller one. Oh yeah, see that one, it just pulled right off just with my hands. I have to cut the bottom off, trim off the top end, and that one's ready to go. Okay, I hope that was helpful. You guys have a wonderful afternoon, again. Uh, this is Sharon with SimplicatingCom. We'll talk to you later.